Well, after the last one, a bit of fresh air. Um, last episode, of course, I looked at the C64 conversion of Chase HQ. One heck of a bad game. This time, uh, we're looking at the sequel, uh, Chase HQ 2 Special Criminal Investigation. So, Ocean released this a year later. Um, it was actually only a cartridge release um, designed for both the C64 and the infamous um, C64 GS console, which was a C64 without a keyboard or like tape disc ports and a little box of only run cartridge games. Um, so that's why you have this third option. So you can play off the keyboard, standard uh, standard joystick, or the C64 GS joystick, which had uh, two fire buttons. Which is actually really convenient, but those joysticks, of course, they're still 9-pin joysticks. I still work on a C64. Sadly, I don't have any of the compatible. So I'll just use the joystick setup. And that's already a good sign to start with. Um, so this pro, this conversion was handled by Pro, which is already a good sign. Um, and yeah, this task group reminds me a little bit of a static version of Turbo Outrun. So I think it's the same team that were responsible. So let's dive in. Although it's a cartridge game, like this was released on cartridge, and I'm playing it from the cartridge, there's still a bit of these pauses. Um, it still happens with the same with the actual cartridge on a real computer, on a real C64 set. So you get the same kind of briefing. Now you see the car this time, the, the target car, although they don't look as good in, in game. But we're up. So already, you know, graphics, they look like a C64 game, and I think, you know, a little in style of their hour. And I like that it's actually hit fire, not just not just shoot, and there's music running. So you've got score stage, timer, speedo, um, up in the corner, up in the top, the bottom you've got boost, and your boost bar, you'll see a little bar that runs down, which I really like. You've got damage, which is the bar and the percentage indicator, the distance, and in the lower right, you'll get ammo. Unlike the first Chase HQ, you're not just limited to ramming cars here. Um, you can actually fire, so you don't have gears, which makes the game a little easier to, to play. Um, you hit the fire and you'll shoot, and you, you know, you shoot you know, from your sidearm, and actually as you get to approach a target, um, you'll get a supply of some, some rockets that can do a little more damage. So let's dive in. So you can already see the game is a lot smoother, a lot nicer graphically. Although it looks like the, sp the speed gauge lags a bit behind your actual speed, so to speak, but... That seems to be stuck making you squeaky. Anyway. So yeah, the first phase is you need to... When you approach the target, you need to blast through a few of these... these uh, cyclists. They're, they're different vehicles for every for every stage. I mean, the formula is still the same. Go through, blast through. And here's the thing: it's much harder than Chase HQ is. Um, so I've just ran out of time. Let's put let's put another credit. In. I think the approach is you're supposed to. Uh, you have to be careful with using your turbos, obviously. Alright, now I've just got the weapon. So each one of those rockets did 5% damage. So the is now it's sort of a combination of ramming them and shooting them. But it always seems to be the case for me is I seem to always use a credit. So already this is... It's much better, and I. It, it, it feels much. It feels like a C64 game. It's pretty solid conversion. I mean, I don't see any. I'm not seeing any flickering. There's some really nice music in it. I love that. I actually like that title thing. They played on the title on the uh, selection screen. And you know, I, I I wonder whether this game could have been a disc release or not. Oh, I'm gonna run out of time again. I was almost. I feel that's something, I do admit, I think the time counter is a little too aggressive here. I could... And I definitely feel... In a different way, the car feels a little hard to control at times. 
But all in all, I, I have to say, I think I enjoy this a lot more than the first game. But the downside is... I really... Like... That was 20 seconds. It goes by incredibly fast. So, we've done our first stage. Yeah, you usually get the little cutscene here. And now you've got the next part of it. So, unlike the first game where it was you were going after five different criminals over the five stages, they weren't related. Here it's a continuous story. You're, the mayor's daughter has been kidnapped and you're... You're tracking down the lead. Which I, I like that it actually sort of evolves like that. It evolves... Like this sort of ongoing story. So this stage, yeah, the first stage we had the the little orange motorcycles. Now I've got these black cars that we have to get our way through. And that's what, one thing I'll admit I don't like with this as much, is I don't really like the way the distance gauge works. Yeah, you know, in the first game it was, you know, you get to 20 units of distance between yourself and the other car, and you, you trigger, you know, you move on to the next phase. Here it's like, what am I meant to do exactly? So by comparison, I am pretty rubbish at this, and that was my last credit, so I hopefully will actually make it through this stage, but I'm probably not sure I will. And it's, it is one of the few problems I have with the game. It's, it's def, it, it is by far much better than the first game. But that really puts it in a, it's good, but a little flawed. I mean... I just, I find myself not enjoying this as much as other, like, driving games. Which, I mean, you've got shooting, you've got driving, it's all... I find that, like, the difficulty level's a little high in places. And I find that the information's a little spotty. I mean, I, I need to go back to the manual. Um, and check the cart manual out. But I've got the impression that... Like, it doesn't explicitly make it clear what you're supposed to be doing to... And then you do that and run out. So yeah, we're out of time, so I think it's going to be game over. I might go for another shot and have a play. But yeah, I mean, I like the fact that it's on cartridge because it doesn't suffer through lots of loading. There's some great presentation, great music. The controls are pretty decent, but it still feels a little off. And I, you know, and I'm a little unsure whether that's just, um, you know, your emulation latency or not. Um. Yeah, you know, and I think my real problem is the difficulty. Like, it just feels a little too hard at points in just trying to get to the goal. You can't skip this, which is annoying. I mean, I've only played a few of the games that were released on cartridge, um, in at least especially, so, you know, I was saying, this was released on cart for the, for the GS console, and, yeah, the big advantage was that, you know, you're supposed to be able to have these loading games, and, you know, big cartridges that were supposed to have a lot more storage on them, by comparison to what you had on, you know, what you could do on a disc or tape, and of course, you know, some card games were easily cracked, <laughs> eventually. Ah! Oh. No, there we go. Got to the, got to the, got to the criminal fan actually. Got to the criminal fan actually needing a credit. I still think that's a bit of unpolished design, but I'm, I'm going to leave that down to the more the arcade conversion. I haven't played, I've actually never, never actually seen the arcade game of this. Um, I've never actually seen it in a cabinet, I don't know if MAME runs it, um, I believe it does.
a lot of these, the, the corners are much tighter here than they were in the first game. Like... Ah! Uh, oh, yes! One second left! <laughs> that was tight. That was very tight. Probably too tight for my taste. Well, so you can sort of see the formula, how the formula works. I mean, I've, I've never gotten to the end of this. Um, obviously playing cart, you know, could sit there and, and run a disc image with a crack and a, and a cheat mode on it, but it's, it's not the same. But I still, you know, I, I think the cartridge presentation does help with the loading. And I think this is one of the earlier games on cartridge, so I didn't necessarily use, you know, it probably didn't pull data out. I know some later games did some amazing, uh, That's probably still my major frustration there, is just... Like, the corners just feel too tight, and they just feel... There's not enough... You know, to be able to... It's just like, use your turbo reliably. Let's see if we can... What's embarrassing come to look at it is that Take a time on that. And I used all my crowds to get up to the suspect. And I have to dive in, I think I have to dive into the manual again and just double check exactly what I'm missing there. But I'll, I, I feel that the fact that the relative difficulty, you know, the fact that you can be consumed by those henchmen vehicles for um, quite some time really takes away from it. I mean, I like this a lot more than the first game. And I'd say it's in that good category. It's like, but it's just, it's just a few flaws that make the game a little too frustrating for me to be able to really enjoy it properly. Which is a bit of a shame, um, you know, having, getting, getting the actual cart for it. While it's one of the easier games to find, um, cart-wise, it's still like, oh, a little, little, little disappointment. But yeah, all in up, I mean, presentation is amazing. 
Um, it uses, the loading is nice. I mean, you could get away off this on disc, but you'd still have loading, but it probably wouldn't be the end of the world. I wouldn't hesitate to want to play this on, I would not want to play this on cassette. Yeah, the gameplay, you know, it's much improved, but I think the track, the, the road layout, and I think the, the timing just feels way too tight to be enjoyable compared, like, Treasure Cube was rubbish in a lot of areas, but it still felt accomplishable to get and apprehend the, the you know, to get to the, to the t suspect in 60 seconds and to apprehend them in another 60. Here it feels a lot tighter. And I don't know whether that's just because I'm rubbish at it because I haven't played it enough or not. I want to, yeah, I want to be, I do want to put more time into this, but the only thing I've in the presentation, I've realized there's no like high score or anything. Like this is the tile screen, a static screen with logos, and then we, you know, you go into the briefing for your first mission. Interesting to note that. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's definitely worth a check out. I mean, it's, it's a decent game. You might find that you might actually be decent at it compared to me, and I'm just pretty rubbish. Um, so worth a check out. Hopefully this is a lot shorter and, you know, than the, the video for the first game. I think I just had more to complain about with that <laughs> than I do here. Um, so yeah, did maybe check this out. Um, I'll link the first video below in case you want to torture yourself. Um, but as again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thanks again to, to all the subscribers. Um, subscribe if you want to see more. Um, I'll have more you know, on the way as usual. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to showing you the next game.